today it's our third uh, webinar in this series. Uh, we've been we, um, we we started this series of webinars around the subject of migrating forms application to Java. And today it's when once you have migrated your application code to Java, how will you actually be maintaining this code? What does it look like? How do you even work with uh, GitHub or um, some similar um, management? Uh, for your for your life of your application, for the ongoing maintenance of your system. Right. So, uh, quick presentation. Myself, Patrick Armu, I'm CEO of Renaps, and we also have today the CTO of the technology uh, behind Ormet Java, Michal. And um, quick uh, presentation about Renaps. Uh, we exist since 2001 uh, when ISO 9001 certified company. Uh, we've been an Oracle partner for many years and completed a lot of projects and uh, I mean a lot of Oracle projects years uh, we continue to to extend our services with, uh, with our Oracle partnership or of course forms uh, a bit of history about it it's launched about four years ago uh, current release is version 12.2 there's an upcoming version maybe towards the end of next year uh, there's a <clears throat> it's about uh, 17,000 customers, so a lot of people are using Forms uh, today in the world. And Forms for Renaps, it is at the center, and it's our most important technology. As you can see here at the middle, in the middle, uh, Forms application, uh, where we have a suite of solutions, uh, where today we will be focusing again on Ormit Java, with a focus specifically to application maintenance. A uh, quick review of our uh, tools, migrating uh, from different technologies, uh, forms or reports towards uh, form latest version, forms to Java, and reports to BI Publisher or Jasper. Um, in terms of why migrate to Java? So uh, I want to do quickly so we can get to the core of today's presentation to really lo look into how uh, we actually man manage those applications. So in terms of uh, why migrate to Java, where well, there's many reasons why many customers are looking into that. Uh, one of them is licensing cost, pretty expensive, uh, lack of manpower, or, or maybe sometimes of new manpower. So you have a lot of, uh, of systems, you have to maintain them. So it's, it's tough to find new people in this type of uh, technology. Um, it's a technology that has some limitations and sometimes just companies want to standardize, unify their development platform around or well around Java is a, as an example of what some customers are doing. Uh, so now why migrate specifically to Java? Well, every perceived weakness in forms is actually a strength in Java. Uh, so what you get is a more powerful application, more open, uh, more possibilities of using mobilization as an example. Uh, in terms of manpower, there's no limit. Uh, there's a lot of developers in the world using this technology. And well, cost is an obvious thing that it's an open source technology. So you can get rid of, uh, of Oracle WebLogic uh, licensing cost and just move towards a, maybe a Tomcat or a JBoss application server. So when you look at this uh, through different angles, you, you look at uh, what other choices some companies are looking into. And, and you, you, as you can see here, some companies choose to migrate to Apex, Application Express, which is actually included in the database. There's a few disadvantages to that approach. The first one is you are still locked in Oracle. So moving to Apex means you're still going to be, uh, you know, very tied to the Oracle database. Um, and the other most important aspect is any of other technology than what we are going to be showing a bit more today, uh, whether you move to Apex, to Java, but manually, uh, to .NET, or really anything else is going to require a redesign. If you redesign, it means risk. It means looking and uh, reanalyzing your business logic, every functionality, and of course, a lot of time and dollar spent for any of those uh, choices. So Ormit, Ormit Java specifically today, which uh, we're at the, our third webinar, is a solution uh, that we've seen uh, permits a, a, an automated approach uh, to a migration with a very high percentage of automation. We're talking about 99% and sometimes much, even more in many cases. 
it provides the ability to avoid the end user retraining, which is cannot be avoided in any other scenario. And it also provides a minimal development learning curve, which is today's actual, actual subject. We'll, we'll look into the, the, you know, the development learning curve today. So Orme Java provides the best migration coverage. It provides the ability to avoid development freeze because you can have your system up and running without uh, being able to, 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 to lock down uh, any of your code. So you can have both forms and Java applications running in parallel. Um, and then you open your application to every modern feature uh, of a Java, of a, any Java application. Um, so here is just to, a bit to show you in terms of the coverage, uh, you will recognize any forms developer will recognize here that it's almost everything. Uh, in, in this slide here, we basically are, are showing uh, the equivalence of each component from the presentation to the development platform and uh, starting with the, the, the web browser where you won't need any more Java applet. Just this by itself is a, is a big win for many customers. Um, then in the application server, uh, what we have here is uh, could be JBoss or Tomcat. This is open and the database remains the same. So we, we our approach is first to migrate the, apl the application to Java and if eventually a customer would like to change the database platform to another one, this should come as a second phase of any similar project. And the development platform is our subject of today's where we will be going into much more details. Um, the technology stack, uh, well, you have Ormid Java, which is a combination of, uh, of Java, of the reforms, uh, libraries, and, and uh, migration technology, uh, which is based also on, on Vadin in terms of framework. And this is an important aspect because when you, when you look at many uh, different approach to migrate or to, to have a, a Java application, you, you you're open to many different type of frameworks. So sometimes some customers might choose uh, Vadin, but others might choose to, uh, to go for Angular, or J, uh, uh, v, v U E. So, I mean, the, the, <clears throat> there's many different uh, framework that are on the market. So we, we thought it's important to show you why Orme Java is specifically uh, leveraging Vaadin in terms of its foundation and the way uh, it's, been, it's been built. So first, in terms of what's the Vaadin framework, I mean, there's uh, some, some companies might not know it, but it's actually used in over 40% of Fortune 500 companies. So it's, it's very used, very popular. Uh, there are many big names uh, that are using uh, Vaadin. Uh, the beauty of Vaadin is that it's most and better suited for business critical applications. It means that, as an example, when you have in forms, you have fields, combo box, you have uh, forms, tables, uh, and, and blocks. So all of these concepts are, are, are already built in in, in a Vaadin uh, type of framework. So, and, and that's one of the main reasons why Vaadin was chosen as a framework versus other type of frameworks. Um, it also allows developers to be more efficient, to, me, to, to, to make it more simple for developers to build new applications in Java. And it provides, why? Because more productivity, meaning uh, it, it will help the developers on the backend type of the work. Um, it will help developers spend more time on the business logic, on, on what's mattering in, in your, in your day-to-day -day work. And it's pretty easy to onboard new developers. So, you know, when you see different frameworks such as Angular, React, uh, Vue, uh, those frameworks uh, are, are pretty complex and they require a lot of different uh, capabilities and knowledge. So sometimes it's even many different roles. As an example, if you want to have a Angular or React, you need someone specialized in the front end. You might also need someone specialized in the back end. And uh, that's a big difference with Vaadin where you will have everything uh, easy uh, without having to think too much about the back end, the front end. 
And not only that, you also get it, uh, make it makes it much more easy for mastering all of these principles that you see here, among which, you know, Java, uh, Jakarta, REST principles, Ajax, and, and many other things. So it just makes it much more simple once you are already migrated uh, to be to be building new applications. Because once once you migrate it, one thing is to maintain what you will have, of course, and we will show you that today in much more details. But after that point, uh, should you decide to build some more functionalities, more applications in your in your environment, well, of course, uh, Vadin could be used because it will be part of the package, and it, it brings you a lot of value compared to other approaches where developers would have to master much more things to be able to work in a Java environment. So what we also provide here, and we will share this presentation with everyone, is that we have a nice link, uh, vaadin.com slash comparison, where you'll be able to, to look into for yourself and, and look into how uh, Vaadin uh, compares to, you know, Angular, React, and many other things. So it brings out the, the good stuff from it without the complexity. So that's the bottom line. All right. Um, so from here, Michal, maybe uh, you can share your screen if you have the ability to do so. Let me see. I believe just that you are muted on your site. We don't hear you right now. Ah, that's it. Yes, that's right. Hey, Michal. Hi. So what I would like to show you today is what you get once you migrate your application to Java with Ormit and Reforms 21. So what you see on the screen is Eclipse-based integrated development environment. Out of the migration, you get a Java project based on Maven. In fact, you get three projects. One is the parent project, which is only responsible here for uh, the configuration of your dependencies and uh, your libraries and so on. So it, it's in fact a POM project. So it doesn't produce and doesn't have any sources of its own. So as you can see here, it's it's not very complex. It has a couple of mandatory dependencies and a couple of optionally ones. Um, but it's the, the important thing is that it's only a parent project. Then you get a project with your migrated source. So this is where you get all your objects migrated to Java. So each form actually gets a, it's a Java class on its own. So here is the class generated for uh, the form employee list and these are the other forms so the, the same thing go happens with the libraries if there was a library it will get its own java class right so, so Mihal, um, I, I thought maybe what we could do today is that uh, we can go through a, a few uh, different subjects and and maybe mm -hmm. keep it uh, interactive in a way so i thought maybe you know, once you have completed the, the overall uh, review, what we could do is maybe just build a simple button that would, as an example, extract maybe information from the Oracle database and just display it into a text field, as an example. Uh, sure, yeah, that, that's, that's no problem. So we have these projects here. This is the parent project, the project with your application, and this is the one that's actually responsible for build, building the deployment files. So. Uh, in this case, it's a WAR file. It only has your configuration, so your properties files with the database connection string, and there is very little dependency here as well. So you only have dependencies for required libraries and uh, the mandatory parameters. So, but that's how the Java application looked like. It doesn't have to work with Java files directly. Here you have tools for working with your forms in a similar way that you are used to work with Oracle Forms application. So if I open any form here, you would see that it opens you and what you see is what you get kind of editor when you can move your items around, create new ones. We'll be working with this form here. So to create a button, 
in that form, we just select it out of the uh, palette. And here we select the block where the item is going to be created. So let's create a button. Uh, it's already here. If you move it around, you can see that it's automatically aligned with other items. So let's just make it here. Let's call it a test button. Right, uh, and the label test. Right, when you select the element here in the graphical editor on the right side, you get all items properties. So there is, sorry, there is uh, no problem with changing the color, for example, if we'd like to change the color to yellow, it's already here, right? And all these changes go into the XML file that holds the structure. So here you can see all your look and feel and all your data model, but we actually work with that because it's just easier, right? Now let's create a text field just over here. Uh, let's call it a test value. And we would like to make it a little bit bigger. And as you can see here, it also uh, snaps to other elements. And this item should have a little bit longer value. So we change the maximum length to 99 for this item. And now if we want to create a trigger, so sort of a listener in Java, we just go directly here and it will navigate to the Java code. So as you can see here for the triggers, each trigger gets its own Java method in the class of the form. So here to access the database, let's do some select uh, into. So in this case, we just make use of a method called SQL select into. We will pick it out of the available completions. And to address, to put the, the value inside the field, we will just get a reference. With that. I just wanted to add, uh, Michal, that uh, I want to reassure everyone that after uh, you know the the demo, uh, we have a couple of slides to talk about you know what training would be required and what do we recommend for for you know forms developers or or developers that know Java to to be able to uh, to easily move into the technology. Just wanted to write this. Yeah. So here we are supposed to write an SQL query, and this is when the fun begins because it's it's not that easy to write it within the string in Java. So this is why we have this tool. Oh, shit. Okay, so let's just connect. Uh, I didn't have a database connection. So what it, what it did here, it just opened us a connection for the tables, for the database. And I can just work with the uh, SQL editor. So I can do something like that, for example, HR. Oh. So is this the dbeaver, uh, Michal? That, uh... Yes, it is a, it is a dbeaver uh, solution that we are making use of here. So it's very uh, flexible. You can uh, work with uh, all kinds of objects in database, but here we are just using it to generate the query. So what I'd like to do here is, let's say, I'd like to extract first name and, uh, or the last name is let's say uh, and that's a nice thing over here if you try to complete your conditions you can actually select out of the uh, possible possible option that's pretty awesome i, I don't think there's <laughs> many tools <laughs> there that does uh, that by default and uh, <clears throat> so that, that's a nice way i mean to build new queries and, and just to interact with your database the good thing is right now we're talking to an oracle database um, maybe, uh, you know, you can show up after, uh, what if you wanted to build a new functionality, but on another database engine at Oracle? Yeah, of, of course, of course. Well, if we save this file, uh, this editor, we can see that there is a change over here and our query goes directly here, right? So this is a good thing. Of course, right. we can work a little bit farther if we want to make it, the parameter out of that. We use a JDBC construction, so we just let's do something like that, and it was uh, this one, right? Okay, I just got it, and if 
you can provide your parameters over here. So that's the same thing, right? But now you have the parameter and you could actually grab this value from anywhere from the application in a, in a similar manner using just get varch or get number or whatever. But you can edit this anytime you want with the same keyboard combination. I'm just pressing Control and 9, and it uh, opens the editor here. But the nice thing over here is also that you can, you know, paste an example value here, right? It's just to uh, verify if your query works. Oh. Um, technical issue? I'm not sure. Well, and uh, what it's doing here, and it will remember this parameter uh, in the query. So whenever you open that the next time, you are going to have this uh, value already for you to verify if the query works, right? And uh, answering your question, Patrick, you can work with um, many database engines. Actually, there is this dedicated perspective for the Beaver when you can work with, uh, it's, it's similar to SQL Developer in a way, it's similar to Toad, but you can, uh, you can actually create a connection to all kinds of engines, including NoSQL databases, including Postgres, MySQL, and so on. Mm -hmm. And yes, and with this, uh, once you have the connection, you can um, you know, browse through the tables, do some sort of a maintenance, but uh, if we just open the object here, you can see that it has this nice uh, kind of editor for the data as well. It works sort of as a spreadsheet. If we uh, edit this, it, uh, it marks you the edited fields. You can uh, verify the script or commit. Yeah, you can generate the script for this update or commit or mm -hmm. uh, something like that. It has this nice feature of navigating to uh, other tables like here there is this uh, foreign key and if we click over there it will take us directly to the other table so That's that basically it. is the equivalent of having two tools when when you work in forms because it means that you are in forms builder kind of and also you're working with sql developer dbver or something similar so it's yes you don't have to leave the tool right exactly and, and it also has here, you can you can uh, select any foreign key of the table and when you are navigating over the table it, it displays you the the values of the corresponding table so it's also a very nice thing Great. just for the data browsing yeah uh, you can export um, the current lizards to multiple formats like uh, html csv json and so on so that's also a good one to have it, it's really it's really a very big tool for browsing the schema. You can use this ER diagram. Yeah, it has lots of features. So if we are if we were to discuss this, we would need definitely uh, we would need more time. For... Of course. Yeah. Right. So sure. let's let, let's get back to uh, to our uh, form here. So what we performed, we are just doing uh, the, this query over here. So now if we want to run and verify uh, our application, we just uh, you know, press this uh, debug or run button over here, and it should open us the browser with this, uh, our button is over here, and he, this is the value, right? A good thing to notice here is that we are, um, we can do the changes in live, so whenever I move this button around and just save, once you, you know, just refresh the page and it's already here, the same uh, you know, refers to Java. So we can work with Java code and you don't have to restart the server. It picks up your changes instantly. And, I, think, uh, I think everybody would agree that this is a 1000 times better than deploying a forms application once you do any change and ask everybody, can you please disconnect? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is, very, it is very quick here, and uh, and also, of course, I had to reload page because that's the only four yes. I'm running. But of if course. We, if we run like the main application over here, uh, right? So employee list, I think, is over here, right? So if I move this button back and just save, I can do this, and it's already here. So I don't have to refresh the page. Uh, I, I just need to save the changes and the, the application will pick that up automatically while, uh, in the development mode, right? 
That's so great. That's, that's very convenient for, for quick changes and quick fixes. What about uh, Michal, if, um, if we wanted to do something a bit more fancy, let's say we want to do uh, something that Oracle Forms cannot do uh, today, uh, as an example, maybe uh, calling a, a REST web service and maybe from that information display it in a, maybe a, a text box. Okay, sure. So we are going to use the same text box for this example. Uh, I had a snippet for that, so we can make use of this. But first, we would need two dependencies. So to add a dependency to the project, we are going to make use of the uh, of the Maven facilities over here. So we just go to the dependencies. And as we are performing the HTTP request, I'm just going to add HTTP client as a dependency and we there will be a JSON uh, content. So we also we are also adding JSON path. So this is how we integrate with some other Java libraries. Yeah, Java libraries. You have tons of that uh, in Maven uh, central repository. So it, it's fairly easy. If we save this, the project is automatically rebuilt. And now we can get back over here and just make use of the snippet I prepared for that purpose. So this so, Michal, a, those, those libraries you just added, and yes. uh, they're all open source, right? Yes. And, and yes, you can add are. as many as you want to do anything you want to do. Exactly, exactly. All right. So <clears throat> this is the, uh, this is this piece of code for doing HTTP requests. This is actually a, a quite nice tool for having the snippets. You can create as many as you want. You can create these templates for, for your code and even declare these variables within the templates and it, it, it will make use of that. So if you insert this here, it will paste this uh, piece of code. Mm, great. And now we are we need to uh, provide the, the new um, Java classes. So this is why we added these dependencies. So now we are just uh, resolving the dependencies. So we are making use of our HTTP uh, client and this is the uh, parsing JSON part. So we are just uh, resolving this one. And uh, it should call uh, this API. It's actually a public API of NASA institution for uh, astronomy picture of a day, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, if we just go here, I'd like to show you this, what it returns. It, it provides JSON like that, right? So. What we are doing over here is we are uh, grabbing this response and then parsing it in a uh, searching for a title field. So that's what this code does. So, and now if we just save this and run the form, it should bring us again here in the browser. I'll just close the other ones. And now, yeah, this is the title from the, uh, from this NASA REST uh, API. So basically, it's a very easy way. Uh, this is how you can add the dependencies to a project. This is how you can call and integrate with any REST API you have. Of course, it, it's going to be more complicated for more complicated scenarios. But it, as you can see, it's fairly easy to add the dependencies and work with the uh, interfaces. So to, for each dependency that you add, you basically right clicked on each yeah. uh, function and just said add that dependency for that. Yeah. Uh, I have some other example here uh, of the uh, Java code. So this uh, the form, it's not a migrated form. It was designed completely here in, in the tool. And there is this piece of code that uses iText and the J3 chart, I think, for generating uh, the charts. And if you just run this, you will see a form like that. And if you generate, it actually generates you a PDF with the, your data. So of course I can you know, change the data over here and it's a, it's a different chart over there. So it's very a very quick, very uh, fast way of integrating uh, libraries. Th these are just the two examples, of course. Right. You, this is a Java application, so as you said, you, you know it brings all these uh, possibilities with it. There's no limits, exact. Very good. Um, I don't know so far if there is any oh a question. Yes, I see one. So what are the integrations possible 
with uh, source control? Okay, well, that's a perfect question at the perfect timing <laughs> because one of the known um, issues in, in forms is version control. So mm -hmm. in forms, there's only, you know, there's not just a few ways you can manage that. Basically, you, you take your FMB object, you convert it to XML if you want to track the fine grain change that happened between each release. And then you push, I mean, or, or I mean, or you, or you pull from your repository. So maybe if you can uh, go into that subject, Michal, and and show us a bit how you would integrate uh, with maybe Git as a as a source control. Of course. Well, as we are using Eclipse IDE here, it's all already here. Like we are using, uh, we are making use of Eclipse facilities. In this view, you can see there is this information within the brackets on each project, and it's actually the name of the branch of the uh, uh, over here. So it's already a shared project in a Git repository. And it's a, it is a local project, but we can, of course, put, push it uh, to any Git remote. For We did some changes. So if we just go to Git staging here, you are going to see the changes we've made. So in POMXML, as you can see, we added two dependencies. In RFXML, you will see that we uh, added a new button uh, and the new text field. And this is uh, yeah, some other change over here. This is a placement of these items. And in Java code, you will see this new imports we've been resolving and also our new trigger with our code, right? So this is how you can browse through your changes. And now in Git, you get this possibility. You don't have to commit all of them. You can actually select some of them and create as many commits as you want. So Let's say we wanted to create one commit for uh, the dependency change. So I just selected uh, using this button and added this pom to, to the index. Now I can create commit. Let's call it uh, adding the dependencies, right? So now it's already there. There is this dedicated view for the history where you can uh, you know, go through your repository. And as you can see, this change is already here. You can verify what it contains, and then the, the same way you could go through any you know change in your repository. But this is one thing. So let's uh, add all other changes and create uh, like uh, test changes, right? Or we could as well create a new branch for that. So I will remove this, and first let's switch to a new branch, for example if I wanted uh, to have them uh, somewhere aside, right? So let's just switch, and this is how we create new branches. And let's call it, I don't know, webinar, right? And it's already here. You can see that it, the, the, the change is reflected in the information in the Project Explorer. So now I just get back here and commit this to test changes, right? And it commit over here. So now I Perfect. have all, both these changes here. And if I switched back to the branch I uh, I was using before, it's team switch to this maintenance, right? Change. We should mm -hmm. see that, yeah. If I click here, the input change outside of the editor and the changes are gone, right? So this is how we switch between, between the branches. So uh, yeah. yes? Sorry. Just sorry, just um, in terms of uh, right now we're we're using and it's what you showed is that basically your environment is already completely integrated with Git. Uh, yeah. Is it possible eventually if, if uh, another a customer is using another uh, source control to be integrating with other ones? And if so, which ones? Well, yeah, uh, Git is just a, a modern one. Of course, you can integrate with some other. Uh, things I'm not sure if it's already installed here, but for the version control, you can uh, share your project using subversion, CDS, and everything that Eclipse supports, which is actually which is a lot, really. Yes, uh, I would recommend Git, but you know it's really up to the up to you what you use. You can you can work with any uh, version control system here. So I'm just going to answer to uh, Sabrina in French to make sure, uh, Sabrina. So. Alors, les, euh, les intégrations possibles en termes de gestion de source, euh, c'est euh, oui, Git, par exemple, ou SVN. Euh, et il y en a beaucoup d'autres, en fin de compte. C'est tout ce que 
Eclipse euh, est capable de s'intégrer avec en termes de, de gestion des, des sources. Donc, c'est euh, pas mal ouvert. Donc, effectivement, ces deux exemples-là, effectivement, oui. Et il y en a euh, plusieurs autres, euh, tels que GitHub euh, et, et puis euh, plusieurs autres qui pourraient aussi être intégrés avec euh, ce même environnement-là. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you install any uh, other plugins in the Eclipse, uh, because you have that option, you can install, you can extend this environment in, in any way you want. And other um, version control systems will appear over here. Like here you have team and Git, but you will have subversion, CVS, and, and, and any other you, you want to use. Perfect. Thank you. We have another question actually uh, that just came in. So uh, the question is, what would be the best approach for an Oracle Forms developer to develop a new form after the application has been migrated to Java? So create a form with Oracle Forms and migrate it using Orme Java or develop a new screen directly in Java using Eclipse or Vaadin. So just maybe okay. some light on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that really depends. <laughs> well, we, we, had, we had customers that were so used to Oracle tools uh, that they kept developing in in the old manner, in the old fashioned way, uh, for for a while. But you know, until they switched completely with the whole team. The good thing with Ormic Java that you are not, you know, we are not forcing you. Uh, we are not making decisions for you. You can migrate part of your application, and and the same actually refers to development. You can keep developing uh, your forms in the original tools and we can keep remigrating them for for you because it's you know fairly easy at some point once the project is already there it just takes a couple of, uh, of minutes to to move your changes to java um, but of course you can start working with the tools with uh, eclipse and create all new forms here and, and keep developing in, in pure java and just forget about you know, uh, Oracle Forms uh, builder, because you can see that, you know, once you get familiar with that, it's it's really faster and it's it, it's, it's as, e as easy as working with Oracle Forms, but you are making use of uh, uh, state-of-art technologies in Eclipse just to make your application better. Exactly, yeah, and I, absolutely in, in, in line with what you said, of course, Oracle Forms is extremely fast, extremely efficient. You, you can build some new applications working on the Oracle database quickly and efficiently. And uh, what that's the advantage actually of, of our approach right here using our, our Eclipse uh, Studio is that we keep, we maintain that methodology of building quickly Forms application. Well, now it's not Forms, it's, it's Java, but using the same mindset of a, of a forms developer interacting the same way with the database and also then opening up possibilities to using a, even and integrating with uh, other frameworks, uh, whether yeah. you're using Vaadin or building some new systems completely differently, but integrate everything into one, uh, one nice system that can be talking to each other. Exactly. Good. Um, I don't know if you had uh, something else, Mihal, you wanted yeah, to... Yeah, I will show you how, how easy it is to build your applications for the production. All right. Yeah, I, so, I already said that the project is based on Maven, right? So we get this project structure in Eclipse, as, you, uh, as you've seen, but here I'm just uh, in a text console for using Maven. And to build your whole application, you just write package. And it should build uh, build as the application, right? It just takes a couple of seconds, and at the end over here, it creates you a single uh, deployment file. file, right? So you know to run it, you just put it wherever you want in the application server. I'm using uh, Whitefly here is in the in the example, so I'm just spend allow deployments, right? So I'm just copying this single file over there and starting right fly in standalone SH. I'm just uh, verifying whether the port is uh, taken. It should be available, yeah. So now if we just start the server, and again, it takes a couple of seconds. Of course, it won't open the browser for us automatically. But just for know. those who are not familiar, Wildfly is basically the open source version of JBoss. And the application should be over here, right? 
this is it. So yeah, so this is how, how, how you build your application and you know, deploying it either to Whitefly, WebLogic, Tomcat, Jetty, whatever application server you have, you just take this uh, single deployment file and you put it over there, it should, it should work. Like uh, as far as I know, all these servers have the, the option for the for quick deployments. It's very uh, convenient in the development time. That's great. It's very, uh, very easy to deploy a, a modified application in production. Good. Uh, is there any question from uh, the technical demo side? Anyone? We still have some time also. Uh, we will go back into the presentation. There's a few more slides about uh, training and all of that. But uh, if you want to see or ask any technical question about what you've seen, don't hesitate. And uh, okay, no questions for now, which I think means uh, it was very clear. <laughs> Thank you, Michal. Let Thank me share my screen again. Won't be long. Oh, yeah. Sure. All right. Good. So the other subject we wanted to cover a bit with uh, with everyone is the, the forms developer training. So you've seen all that. Now you know that you know that the Eclipse Studio makes it pretty easy and straightforward. It resembles a lot like building a forms application. You can, as an example, create a little button from menu, draw it exactly where you want, double click, add some uh, trigger to it, the same way you would do in forms and, and then have some code. But the question you might have is, how do you get to know all of that? What, what's what's the my path to, to be learning and to be able to do and, and manage forms, up, migrated forms application, and then also just deploy and develop new forms, new Java systems. So in terms of prerequisites, to, to what is, is needed is, of course, first you need to understand forms basics. So we have to take as an assumption that you are or you are knowledgeable, you understand how forms works. This means you just worked with forms two years, three years uh, is more than enough to understand all the, all, all the base of, of how forms operates, uh, the trigger based mechanisms, the built ins, the properties, and even drawing some, some new screens and the blocks and all of that. So that's a prerequisite. And, and also another prerequisite is just some basic Java knowledge. Uh, so basic Java knowledge as a prerequisite is pretty vague, I understand that. So what we would recommend first is uh, we would do a little assessment of, of your technical skills, understand where you stand, what you know, what you are missing or what you need to know a bit more to be, uh, to be independent. And based on your current uh, technical skills, we would recommend some very specific Java training, whether it would come from uh, from any external vendor with some, you know, there are some, some standard Java courses uh, out there, even a lot of free ones, by the way, or uh, some coaching, could be some, some coaching sessions. But regardless of all of that, uh, once you move forward with Ormid Java, there are some stuff already included in terms of getting you up to date and trained. So one is the complete developer guide. Uh, so this is a very detailed uh, developer guide, which provides you all the details about, uh, you know, all the, the built-ins in Java that are available and all the, the mechanisms to develop and deploy. I don't know if uh, Michal, you want to talk a bit more about the developer guide. Uh, well, yeah, it's uh, based on the PLSQL examples, just to mention, because like, like uh, Patrick said, some knowledge of Oracle Forms is, is required. So I suppose most of the developers will, you know, have the basic knowledge of PLSQL. So yes. Just to show you what happens with your application as well. So it's not only to, to bring you all the, the basics and all the data, data types, uh, constructions for, from the Java, it also shows you you know what happens with your code so what kind of plsql constructions are transformed and what java constructions at the end right exactly thank you Michal. And, and by default i mean you you also get with any of these projects a three-day or java library training and three days 
sometimes more than enough to cover every aspect that you need to know. And after that, I mean, we're, we're, whether it's us or, or if you go to, um, you know, there's many uh, online courses and there's many providers of Java training, we're always here also to, to help and to make sure that you are capable to, to manage your application once you are migrated. It's uh, the, the great thing about our approach is that your code will remain recousin, re, easy to maintain because you will recognize every piece of it. And by recognizing every piece, it, it makes it easy to, to, to see and to re realize the business logic is the same. It's just now the language is different, but it's the same sequence of event, whether you have an if statement, or a loop somewhere, everything is there at the right place at the same, just even the same naming convention, just now in a Java language. And comments as well. Uh, yeah, exact. Even the comments remain at the exact same spot. So it's yeah. very easy. And um, well, to conclude, maybe today's presentation in summary, uh, well, forms to Java migration can be automated, which is a, a great thing. Uh, the technology behind and what makes Ormid Java um, great is, is also based on Vadin framework um, components. Uh, Vadin, why it's better? Because it's better suited for business application, business critical applications. It's, it makes it easy for new developers to onboard, and it doesn't require developers to master so many different skills, backend, frontend, and many different underlying technologies. And <clears throat> in terms of the post-migration application maintenance, where we saw it's pretty straightforward, uh, you have some easy to use development tools. Uh, you have some incorporated um, packages such as dBeaver. By the way, dBeaver, uh, for everyone who doesn't know, is, a, is an open source um, equivalent to SQL developer, which we would recommend you to just go around and look uh, on the web as a dBeaver. It's, it's a nice uh, tool to, to manage your, your objects. So what you've seen today is based on the dBeaver. Uh, code and it's completely integrated into the tool of Eclipse, which makes it easy to not having to jungle like in forms and many different uh, windows. You have everything integrated and also very modern. And the business logic maintenance will remain very similar to what you have in Oracle Forms. All right, so let's open it up again for questions. Let's see if we can. <clears throat> Uh, open up for um, for questions. Stephen, mute. All right. Uh, any any questions? Let's see, I'm opening it up. Uh, oh, I have one question. Do you have? to dbeaver yes it's uh it's funny because the the way you wrote it, it would make sense but it's funny that it's uh, <laughs> the it's actually beaver is an animal yes the beaver <laughs> so i i just shared the beaver the way it's uh, written so you you can go and and look uh, on google you will find it i'm sure easily and if not just call me <laughs> or contact me uh, it will be easy to uh, to share you the link um, so if we have uh, no more questions, oh, maybe another one <laughs> with pleasure, Jack. So, all right. Yes. Yes, 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 of course. So we have, uh, uh, let me just quickly share my screen one last time. Uh, <clears throat> here we go. So what I just, I don't know if you can see. No, maybe not yet. Sure. Here. I just wanted to, to share that this, this video will make, uh, will be available also on the YouTube Renaps Academy uh, channel. We, with a few links here uh, for your information. And we always remain available if you want to have a personalized demonstration, personalized demo, anything you would be, uh, we would be glad to, to show you. Just admit right. you want to 
to show your nice office. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, I have to now. <laughs> thank you, Michal. All right. Well, a big, a big thank you to everyone, and uh, hope to to see you soon again in our, our next webinars. Have a great one. Thank you. Thanks, bye. Thank you. Bye bye.